Uh, we saw in the last lesson how we can calculate the electric potential energy stored in a capacitor. We have three equations for this. It's one half times the charge that develops on the positive plate uh, multiplied by the voltage of the battery, or it's one half times the capacitance multiplied by the voltage of the battery squared, or it's the amount of charge that develops on the positive plate squared divided by 2 times the capacitance. 1 half QV, 1 half CV squared, or Q squared over 2C. We can say that that energy is actually stored in the electric field. Now U stands for the energy in units of joules. I want to define a new quantity called energy density, and we'll symbolize that with lowercase u. So that's measured in joules per cubic meter. In other words, we're defining energy density as the energy per unit volume. So this parallel plate capacitor has a spacing of D and the plates have an area of A. So the volume in which this uniform electric field is contained can be represented by this shaded area. Shaded in orange. Okay, and that shaded area has a volume just equal to the area of the plates multiplied by the spacing. So if we wanted to find the energy density for this electric field, we just need to make some substitutions in place of the potential energy, capital U. Let's use this expression, 1 half CV squared. And then in place of the volume, we'll say it's A times D. Now, capacitance for this type of capacitor, a parallel plate capacitor, is epsilon naught times A over D, and we can say the voltage is equal to E times D. Technically, the voltage is the integral of E dot dS, but the electric field is uniform, so we can take it out of the integral. We have delta V equals E times the integral of dS, and we can just make an origin um, where Y equals 0 at the bottom plate, and then Y equals D at the top plate. So instead of dS, we can call it dY as Y goes from 0 to D. Yeah, so of course we get V just equals ED. So if we make the substitutions, we have our energy density is equal to 1 half epsilon naught A over D times E squared times D squared all over AD. So we can cancel out the A. Let's see, I can combine this D with this one to make it D squared. And then that cancels out. So we actually get a pretty simple expression for the energy density of the electric field in a parallel plate capacitor. The energy density is equal to 1 half times the permittivity of free space, times the electric field strength squared. And that's actually not just the energy density for the electric field in a parallel plate capacitor. That's actually the energy density for any electric field. Well, I would say keep this formula in your back pocket. We're not going to apply that very much in this current unit of study or any upcoming units of study, not until we get to the study of electromagnetic waves, which I believe is the final chapter in this course. We'll say any form of light, whether it's visible light or infrared radiation, um, gamma radiation, microwaves, you name it, there's a broad spectrum of different types of electromagnetic radiation. Our eyes only tune into a small amount of it that we call visible light. And all of these share one thing in common. They're oscillating electric fields that are perpendicular to oscillating magnetic fields. Now, the symbol for magnetic field turns out is capital B. We can put this symbol over each of those uh, to state that electric field and magnetic field are both vector quantities. So there's an overall energy density of electromagnetic radiation. The energy density associated with the electric field, what we just found, is one half epsilon naught. Oops. 
times E squared. What's the energy density associated with the magnetic field? Well, we won't cover that until we get to uh, future chapters on magnetism, but when this equation is restated in the unit on electromagnetic radiation, um, hopefully you can recall where that first came from.